Join the show tonight. One of the best consistent voices in D2 football and other sports for that matter. Some call him the Dean of D2, but he's back on D1R tonight. Wayne Cavati, what's going on, man? Ah, uh, nothing, man. Thanks for having me. It's uh, I can't believe it is time to talk football. It, it's crazy how quickly this has creeped up on us. It does feel kind of ridiculous, but as someone who, you know, obviously you get it week in, week out, doesn't stop, I'm, I'm glad because uh, you can only look at who has the best uniform in college football graphics so many times uh, before I'd like to start talking about real football again. Yeah, yeah, and that's where we are. Uh, you know, it's crazy. It, it's it's much harder in the current state of football on all levels with the transfer portal and teams jumping all around and, you know, regions and everything. But uh, I guess it makes it more fun. It makes preseason <laughs> rankings and, and, and predictions a little more challenging, but it it's makes it more fun and you really got to pay attention these days. Absolutely. That's uh, I'm right with you there, although it does complicate a lot of things, especially on, on our end, trying to at these lower levels to keep up with everything that's going mm -hmm. on that isn't maybe as publicized. Um, and that's what, you know, we're really excited about uh, hopefully partnering here with Athlink to try and get a lot of that information when it comes to the transfer portal and those kind of things. But uh, tell me about what's been keeping you busy when it comes to D2 sports out of season for football, obviously not the only sport you cover. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, this weekend was the MLB draft. So we, we saw 13 players uh, get drafted, um, which, awesome. you know, with the um, it used to be in like the 50s, but it used to also be almost uh, more than 30 rounds, you know. So since it's been cut back to 20, we're, we're happy to see those 13 go. Um, you know, the earliest one that went was uh, in the sixth round. So, that you know, that's great news. I, I don't know how closely you followed baseball, but um, Seaver King was uh, he was on Wingate for Wingate for two years yep. and he went number nine or 10 overall. So it was cool. He finished his career with Wake Forest, but it's still cool to see those guys go, especially. You know, they they mentioned the Wingate Bulldogs a couple times, so it's oh, cool yeah. to hear that when you're in the first round. So yeah, that that's been taking up a, a lot of my attention the past uh, couple days, as uh, for sure. Absolutely, and uh, you know we talk the same thing when it comes to football. I know we were talking about West Florida recently. You throw a name like Austin Reed out there, who mm -hmm. that's where that's where we know him from, and he goes on to the with the Hilltoppers and, and does his thing. But um, talk about the uh, the D two report, bringing that back, and potentially for those not familiar, what that uh, what that entails. What are your plans are for that? Yeah, so that's my my Substack newsletter. As you know, most of my work goes on NCAA.com um, with TNT Sports. Um, this my Substack. The reason behind it is basically uh, just to go a little more dive deep, you know, deeper dive into baseball and football, and kind of in the in the fall when I'm writing about D2 football on NCAA.com, I could do fall reports on my newsletter for baseball. When I'm writing about baseball in the spring, I could do football reports about spring ball, you know, and just kind of make that all year coverage and really shine some light on the D2 student athlete. Because, um, you know, a lot of people think, you know, it is cool, right? I get to watch sports. I get to write about it. But it's always been this is going to be my 10th season as a D2 beat writer. And it's always been about the student athlete. It's always about getting shining the light on on people that deserve it, that work their butts off. And maybe don't get the recognition they deserve because of, you know, where they are, because of television, because you, you know, all you could do is stream or watch on YouTube, to, you know, YouTube streams and stuff. So I that's always been my goal. And that's that's what I do in the D2 report is just get more names out there and more visibility to these guys. I love that. 100 percent with that. And you know, I mean, you you've seen our stuff, you know, like. I'm not in this for X's and O's at all. I, I could never be a football coach. I don't have a passion for that. What I have really do have a passion for is the storytelling, just the same thing you talk about, of the athletes, right? The stories that maybe aren't even necessarily associated with football. A lot of times it does have to do with some on-field performance. That's always uh, that's always sweetens the deal. But a lot of times what these guys are doing when they're not uh, wearing that helmet, I, I think that's the best part of it, especially at this level and what we get out of this. Um, and you talk about you know the streaming things. That's until Flow Sports just eats up every small school in America. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, a, a thing I think is important is, you know, I'm sitting here on your show and I've been on the D2 football guys show. And, and you know, when it comes to baseball, the D2 baseball insider yep. and, and small college basketball, we all it, there's no competition. Right. Yeah. Because we're all in this. Everyone that that covers D2 sports, we're in this for the same thing. And it's what you said. It's to tell the story. It's to elevate the student athlete and get recognition on this guy, on these guys. So it, it's fun for me to come on your show because I, you know, I, I respect you guys, what you're doing. You're, you're doing the same thing I I've done. And for a long time, there was us just me and D2 football. And now, now that we got some help and it's great to see you guys doing that. And I, and I, like, I appreciate you having me here and, you know, it, it's, it's just a great community that we have. Thank you, man. I, and, and I'm right. I'm right with that. And it's never been, 
you know, you're never trying to outdo somebody else in this space. For me, it's always about outdoing myself. And uh, what did we do last year? What was our last episode? What did that look like? How can we increase the production value or make that present things better? Or more importantly, just cover more, right? I think that's always the, the question that people at this level have is how can you cover more? You mm. do a great job of that. And on the football side of things, one of the toughest things to do in that regard is rankings. And at this level, it is nearly impossible to do. If anyone's got to get a good crack at it, it's going to be you. You put them together, the first preseason rankings for D2 football heading into the fall for Lindy Sports Mag. And uh, obviously, everyone totally agreed with where you uh, put their favorite team, correct? Of course. You know, yes. it, it's, a, it's a gift and a curse, right? Yeah. I get to talk about football, and then I get to be yelled at it, right? And that, that's, <laughs> what, that's what rankings do. Um, of course, not everyone agrees, you know, and – one of the things about D2 sports that is always going to make it harder is is that's what regionalization brings to off-season banter, right? It's You're so focused on your region that when you see a team like Lenore Ryan that finished this, the year in the top four and I have them outside the top ten, yep. you just – why, right? But, you know, when you look at the big picture, they lost their head coach. The, Dwayne McGee was in the transfer portal when I was doing the rankings. You know, you had no idea. He's one of the best running back, if not the best running back in, in – D2, you know, so you have a lot of question marks and that's why I put this out there. So you get to get the ideas in your head and you start understanding why things are kind of looking a little bit different heading into this season. Absolutely. And on a real note, I mean, you and I have talked to talk about what goes into these rankings. And this isn't something for you or your engagement farming, or there's a lot of places that will just throw together rankings just to get clicks. Because let's face it, this does get clicks. And for me, it's the best case scenario because you go through the actual effort. Um, and I'll say this, like you go through the actual effort of putting this together. I get to just take all those rankings and put them together in a cool graphic. So it's a, it's a win-win for me because I don't have to make the rankings, but I get to post it out and get to post out the hard work that you do. But talking about these rankings, tell me about what goes into it to make them as comprehensive as possible. Well, first of all, I did text you when, with the with the graphic, and I appreciate it because I'm old, I'm a journalist, and I can't do the pretty stuff. So I thank you for <laughs> making it into a graphic. It's good, but it's it's like you said, you know, um, it's a very hard time of year. Kids are still going in and out of the transfer portal, um, and, and I reach out to these coaches, and I and I I I lay it on the line. I'm like, look, I know you probably don't know, right? Like your spring ball just ended. You you may have just lost a couple guys that were playing for you two weeks ago. So let's do the best we can. Let me know this. I want to know how many starters are back, including two deep. You know, I want to know maybe they don't, they're not a starter, but they have the yep. experience because they were on that two deep. And that all takes part of it. And obviously I need to know the stars that are back. You know, I, I need to know those guys. I need to know the big names. And, um, and, and just really after that, it's me deep diving in the schedules and, and seeing, you know, now that there is a week zero, you know, looking at who these teams are playing and, you know, we're one year away from a super region shakeup that's going to turn everything on its head. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's it's just looking at that and looking at who these teams are playing early on in the season. You know, Grand Valley State, Mines, these are all teams that always test themselves early. Um, so that all that stuff plays a part in it. But a lot of it is just talking to coaches and getting as much of, of the info as I can, um, as early as I can, and, and hoping that it sticks, <laughs> especially yeah. that early. Absolutely, and what the team looks like even now compared to when it is week zero, week one, whenever it is, could be so drastically different. Mm -hmm. But this top five, right, going down the list for those just listening, Harding, Central Missouri, Pittsburgh State, Ferris State, and Valdosta. Looking at those squads, did those guys just – that probably felt right off the rip. How much consideration was there in that? I think uh, the general consensus from a lot of people is – I didn't see many too many arguments about that. Obviously, I had some few disgruntled Laker Laker fans down there in Allendale, and uh, Mines obviously is in that conversation after a couple runs at the Natty. But those top five right there, it feels like really solid spots throughout the the top of this list. Was it as easy as it looked? No, <laughs> and, the, and the reason is the two teams you mentioned. Yeah, obviously, uh, let, let's talk about outside the top five real quick. The Colorado School of Mines, the John Matoka era is over, and, yep. and that was a heck of an era, right? Like it was insane. But, you know, you look at it and you had Justin Dvorak win um, a Harlan Hill in 2016. You had Isaac Harker in 2018. This is a school that always has big quarterbacks thrown for 3,500, 4,000 yards and 40 touchdowns, right? So Evan Foster's coming in and he's got an All-American wide receiver in Max McLeod. That's a big question mark, yep. but there's still Colorado School of Mines. So it was tough to leave him out of the top five. 
And then you mentioned Grand Valley State. That could be my biggest mistake. They could be as high as number two, right? You you have so many. I think it's nine returners on each side of the ball. But those guys that they lost, you know, like a Kate Peterson, they were not just good players. They were some of the best in D2. That's a big hit. And that's kind of why they, I had them lower. But then you said you jump back into the top five. All right, Harding. You got Blake De La Cruz, you got Braden Jay, Cole Keelan, and Jalen Spicer back. That's three. I, I did the math before the show just so I had it. That's yep. 3,812 yards rushing and 53 touchdowns that are returning. AKA okay. absurd. Absurd. And then we talk about it. If you look at it straight forward, the offensive line has a lot of holes. But if you look at the two deep, they had two offensive lines last year. So did yes. they lose four starters? Yeah. But they have five guys that played a ton of minutes all the way to the national champion, right? Like this is an experienced team. And they were great. They were a great rushing team for years before last year they erupted and set every record in the world. Yep. That's yeah, not, that's gonna not change. going anywhere. And you talk yeah. about the system too. I think that's it's very important in this role in that if – just for sake of the example, the number two team, if Central Missouri loses, say, three starting offensive linemen, that could mean a very different thing than a Harding who is running a very, very different offensive scheme mm. uh, and where you're not maybe relying, not that the offensive linemen do not have to go make plays because you, you could argue that they have to make the most plays and be the most athletic in a system like that. But uh, it, it's just very different in the way they fit into that and maybe aren't as relied on as individuals. It's more of that, you know, doing your 111th. But that's a, that's a whole other mm. rabbit hole and, and kind of continue to go down that list you look at a team like central washington at number eight and i know a lot of people maybe on the outside thought the wildcats uh, out west there they were kind of a one and done deal this playoffs they surprised a lot of people down there in the lone star you're pretty high on them heading into 24 tanner volk is is going to be defensive player year you know i mean that guy is amazing and oh, yeah. he charges it's not just what he does everyone else plays with him right you got to keep up with your best defensive player so um, plus, you know, it was the way they were winning ball games. Uh, it, it was impressive. They were they were in dog fights with some really good teams, and they didn't relent. Sometimes they were. It looked like they were down and out, and they just they they hung in there. And I just like that. And they have enough returning, of course. Like everybody in, in D two, you lose a lot every year, um, but they have enough returning. And again, you know, a guy that I have pegged as a defensive player of the year. Um, and a Harlan Hill candidate, which if you know about Harlan Hill, like you just defenders don't win that. There's been one in the entire history, but this guy is that good. What do you have, like 13 interceptions last year or something? The guy's amazing. And then you talked about it. I I can't remember what he did, but on Twitter, the guy's like all American, like not football wise, like human. the best human being in the world. Absolutely. Right? Like, 100%. It's like, yeah. how are you not rooting for this guy? If, I, if I'm correct, looking back at it correctly, I'm going to have to pull it up to, to fact. I believe it was a bone marrow transplant. Yes. Yes. That's what I saw. Yeah. I mean, that's the guy's awesome. just amazing. Um, that so might yeah, be number so, seven worthy. I'm just saying. <laughs> right there. <laughs> but on the football field, he's also the best, uh, yeah. probably DB in the nation. Um, so yeah, I just think that it was the way they won the experience they got. And then the, the people they have coming back were key people. And I think that's a big deal. Yeah. And now when you look at this list, I guess in particular, and you talked about how this landscape has changed so much with the transfer portal and, and the other things that have uh, been, you know, annexed into the college football landscape. Is there a team on here that has benefited a lot from that transfer portal and that maybe you uh, you weighed that a little bit higher with them and that you think they're really getting some playmakers that will come in and make a difference right away in the fall? I think Slippery Rock getting Lawrence at running back from Notre Dame um, was huge. Because we know that uh, uh, Long is going to chuck it. We know they oh, they're they're we could call them wide receiver. You right? They have a wide receiver every year. Uh, that that's amazing. We know the passing game is not going to be anything when you bring in the balance of a guy that could it, rush for. I think you know he only played nine, eight or nine games last year and still had nearly twelve hundred yards. This guy is lethal. I mean, you're talking about one player. Plus, they brought in a tight end uh, uh, and. I think it was a backup tight end. They brought in someone else. I, I just think it, they're, they're making an impact. I know Central Missouri brought in a wide receiver because, you know, they got to replace a, a big wide receiver. They're number one um, yep, from last Marshall year. So, yeah, so they got it. They brought in a wide receiver. So I think those guys made – that. those two teams made a lot of moves. But really, I mean, it's so tough to say because, you know, when I'm making these rankings, I haven't seen how they, they mesh. I could look at it on paper and say, oh, th this team got three D1 guys. But – What's that mean if they're not that meshing, you know? And that that's something like a Ferris State has always done. They've been able to bring in a guy 
And it's like, look, we're going to give you a chance to win it all, but you got to play Ferris State football. And they do. That's not always the case, right? And, and so I, I don't know if it's – I don't do the on-paper winners or losers until we get closer to the the opening game in the transfer portal. But I do think that Lawrence addition to Slippery Rock's running game is just going to be um, insane. I would definitely uh, tend to agree. And we can just stick right on Slippery Rock here. And some big news that we got uh, just earlier today in the D2 football world. Now, it'll be a little while back when this airs on Monday. But uh, Kyle Sheets, man, signing a deal, getting it done with the Kansas City Chiefs. He was picked up uh, as undrafted free agent by the Saints. Now, finally, inks a deal with the defending Super Bowl champions. Tell me about uh, your immediate reaction to this one. Uh, I was psyched. Uh, my old um, D2 Nation podcast host, Bethany Bowman, uh, she now covers the Chiefs. So I told okay. her to go stalk him tomorrow at training camp. So we'll have more information, <laughs> hopefully, in the coming days. Good. Um, but, you know, it's a it's a great look. He's he's I think he's listed at six foot four, you know. And so that means when in D2, you're anywhere six two to six five. Right. Like when yep. they say you're six four. That's a huge advantage in D2. He he was like full helmet over most of the guys that were covering him. And that's still a big advantage in um the football in the National Football yep. League, too. You know, uh, he's got the size. He I think his combine was about 4.5 40, you yep. know, which is not you're not lighting it up, but you have separation skills, which we saw because he was that deep threat all the time. You know, he's not going to win win the race, but he's going to get separation and he's going to get downfield and he's going to get open. And he's got those quarter those hands that quarterbacks love. He can make um, contested catch grabs. He can make like he doesn't just drop balls like he has soft, strong hands that just catch everything. And if we look at the landing spot, it's much better than the Saints, right? The Chiefs have, you know, the Rice situation is going to be weird. I know they signed Hollywood Brown, but I also have a fantasy football podcast. If you look at Hollywood Brown's numbers, he's one of those guys that gets the big plays and it really inflates it. Like he's not a good catch percentage based on target type of guy and, and Sheets is and you know, there's going to be opportunity there. And I know they have a deep wide receiver room, but they're already talking about Kadarius Tony getting cut. Yep. You know, Hardman um, is is not like a, a mega star or anything. So, uh, you know, he came, he got, like you mentioned, he he got cut by the Saints. He came, he, he practiced, they signed him to a deal. They saw something they liked. So I think it's, a, I mean, and you got Patrick Mahomes throwing you the football. You're, you're going to succeed, you know? So I think it's a great landing spot and, it you know a heck like you said by the time this airs but a heck of a 48 hours for him you know go, showing up at chiefs camps and, and then getting added to the roster i hope so too that, that seems to definitely be the way this is trending i mean you look at last year for him 76 catches almost 1200 yards 17 touchdowns and yeah listed at 6 4 220 you go down that list of the chiefs wide receivers not typically one that you associate with these kind of big targets, right? Some of those names that you mentioned. Outside of Justin Ross uh, on that depth chart, at least from what I could find, they don't have a, a dude with this kind of physical makeup. That, that is Kyle Sheets. Mm -hmm. And so now it'll be interesting to see how he fits into that offense. But again, when you're a guy who's built like that and there's not many other humans, especially uh, on that squad that's <laughs> built like that, how do you see him fitting into to this offense and, and kind of earning his stripes? You know, I mean, it, it will all come down to like real training camp and everything. Like right now, it's you know, it, it's what can you do? Well, let's see your physical attributes. Yep. But it, it's like I said, it, it's an ideal situation, and, and you know, it's a he's going to have a chance. The Chiefs don't shy away from starting. It's not like they, they've won Super Bowls with all pros at every position, right? They they had Jody Fortson from Valdosta State at, backing up Travis Kelsey for years. He's got a Super Bowl ring to show for it. You know, like. The, the Chiefs don't shot. If, you, if you're if you going to catch a ball from Patrick Mahomes, they're going to play you. And, and that's yeah. what Kyle Sheets does. And, and I think he'll just be uh, – I think – look, I don't I don't think he's uh, the next Adam Thielen right off the bat. But he has that kind of – you know, he has that kind of trajectory to him that he could be a trusted guy that hangs around for a couple years, does exactly what he do needs to do, and then gets that number two wide receiver opportunity, and all of a sudden everyone's like, "Oh, the D two kid from you know, and, and from slip little slippery rock," and and I that's just how these stories start. You you earn your time, you you earn your trust of the quarterback, and and he's in a situation that, you know, I'm not saying go out and draft him in your fantasy football league in the fourth round, but <laughs> we're definitely keeping an eye on him. Like I think it's a great fit. I love it. Yeah, and then we get to go through this all again of. 
there's really a school named Slippery Rock, and that would be all over the place. I love. I mean, we get a cycle every once in a while. I feel like when one of these guys goes and does something great, because the athletics in general down there in Pennsylvania, that's just they're on another level, especially when it comes to the Rock. So um, yeah. I'm excited about that, but really thankful for you joining me tonight, man. I think that's all I got for you as it comes to the rankings and, and as far as Kyle Sheets goes. But thank you for your continued coverage, being a great voice in this space. Always a pleasure to, to have you on here, and it won't be the last time. All right. Thank you. I always appreciate you having me. Absolutely. Have a good rest of your night, man.